The rains brought flooding to the north state. Several counties now in recovery mode. How local agencies and residents are picking up the pieces. Plus, local flooding leads to several water rescues from our local agencies all across our north state. And finally, delayed harvest, delayed planting. Farmers across the state feeling the impact of the storms, how it could affect prices at your grocery store. All that and more starts right now. This is KRCR News Channel 7 at 6.30, the North State's News. Well, good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight on the North State's News at 6.30. I'm Dylan Brown kicking off our show tonight. We're taking a live look at the city of Reading from our Hasseru Law Sky Cam. Those recent storms really have that Sacramento River rolling tonight. We're seeing a break from the wet weather for now, but it's going to be back before we know it. We're joined now by first forecaster Preston Dunyon for a quick check of those conditions and more. Preston. Yeah, Dylan, we're enjoying beautiful conditions out there and it helps for folks trying to recover from the flooding that we saw across the valley yesterday. Still a little breezy out there. Winds kind of screaming down south and there's that classic vine. Why are you running? Well, they're running towards something a little farther to our south. You see thunderstorm activity kind of along the California, Nevada, Arizona border. That's where that low pressure is, but you can also see a bit of ridging over our area, keeping our skies clear and setting us up for those dry and actually mild conditions. So we're going to continue to see that we're kind of blocked off, right? We're not seeing that channel of moisture, that river flowing right into our region, but instead we're seeing those clear skies. Our offensive line is doing a good job, right? Now let's take a look at your overnight lows or instead your daytime highs tomorrow. You can see across our Western Mountains, 54 in Trinity Center, 56 in Weaverville there. A little bit cooler in Mount Shasta City, a little warmer in Hayfork. Now, as we slide further to the east, you'll see temperatures about 47 in Fall River Mills in Chester, 56 there in Shingletown, 50 in Bernie. I'll tell you about everything in the valley and further south in your first look forecast coming up. All right, thank you so much, Preston. Well, we are looking live right now. This is just east of Corning. Our chief photographer, Adam McAllister, we had Tyler Van Dyke out there as well. This is near the Woodson Bridge RV Park, just along the Sacramento River, just east of Corning a little bit. They had to be evacuated, the RV park there, last night. While we saw the sun, we saw a break from the rain. A lot of folks still have not yet been into their homes due to that massive amounts of flooding. You can see right there, agencies are trying to pick up the pieces left behind from the massive amount of weather we saw yesterday. We're going to have more on that later on tonight at some point, but it may be sunny today, as I said, but residents of Tehama County continuing to feel those impacts from flooding due to the heavy rainfall yesterday. That water might be back in the Sacramento River today, but that's not where it was last night at the River's Edge RV Park in Red Bluff. Much like the Woodson Bridge RV Park, River's Edge experiencing flooding caused by the heavy rainfall. Residents were out today cleaning up the mess the storms left behind. And Glynn County also seeing some major effects after that rainfall. Flooding hit the town of Orland on many neighborhood streets as well as the surrounding land. Check out this video. This is taken in North Orland on County Road C and DD, showing the aftermath of a common creek that had overflowed, ran out of its banks, and even broke a levee. Orland Fire Chief says this type of localized flooding is something they haven't seen since the 2017 storms. This year's a little wetter than a normal wet year, so... A lot of snow melt came down. It wasn't that the rains were super heavy. It just melted so much snow that all that runoff came down from the mountains and that was our big impact. Uh, so our role is more of a respond, you know, to things that are happening, you know, whether it's homeowners calling because they're flooding or going out and trying to help the county, you know, with road closures and sandbags and, you know, whatever we can do to help out. North of County Road 200 from DD to FF was the most heavily impacted in Orland and Glynn County in general. As the storm clears, officials do want to remind you to not cross flooded roadways and use alternative routes until the path is clear for travel. So the most recent updates on flooding and road closures, you can check out our website, krcrtv.com. New tonight at 630, a driver in Butte County had to call for help when they got in floodwaters off of Ord Ferry Road. These pictures coming in from the Butte County Sheriff's Office. Officials say the driver ignored the posted road closure signs before trying to get through the flooded waters and got stuck. Luckily, nobody was hurt. The driver and their passengers were able to make it out safely. But of course, the Sheriff's Office wants to remind you this rhyme. Turn around, don't drown. It can quickly go south when people try driving through those flooded roads. And speaking of, a search and rescue team was also out in Tehama County earlier today helping people escaping the floods. So this is the scene near uh, Aramayo Way and Tehama Vina Road between the communities of Tehama and Los Molinos.
Uh, they were also out at Dog Island in Red Bluff rescuing several people, many homeless. And another daring rescue made by local agencies in Shasta County. Take a look at this one. This video from the Shasta County Sheriff's Office. A grandmother and her 10-month-old grandchild had to be rescued from their home in Palisadro after floodwaters started to raise, trapping them in their home. Sheriff's deputies and dive team volunteers able to make it out to them via boat before bringing them safely back to dry land. 43 of California's 58 counties are under a state of emergency right now because of the recent storms the state's experienced. Today, in fact, Governor Gavin Newsom traveled to one of the hardest hit areas, Monterey County. There he met with officials and surveyed some of the storm's damage firsthand. You look back the last few years in this state, it's been fire to ice and, you know, no warm bath in between. Uh, this weather whiplash, the extremes that we are going through. If anyone has any doubt, about Mother Nature and her fury. If anyone has any doubt about what this is all about uh, in terms of what's happening to the climate and the changes that we're experiencing come to the state of California. Now that atmospheric river is expected to bring more wet weather to the state again this weekend. The impact of the ongoing storms could trickle down to the prices at our local grocery stores even. California, the leading agricultural producer in the U.S. and many of the state's key growing areas were flooded, delaying harvesting of essential crops. Shelley Mosaki reports. A devastating blow to our nation's top crop producer. The recent back-to-back -back storms hitting California's critical agriculture regions may also impact the U.S. food supply. The pain is going to be prolonged for many weeks uh, and months. This should have been the beginning of the harvest season. The relentless rain is flooding crops, evacuating farm worker communities and delaying the harvest season. California is the golden state of food production. It produces the majority of some specialty crops, like certain fruits and vegetables in the country. In January's uh, storm events, we had over 15,000 acres that were impacted by flooding and inundation with over $330 million worth of farm losses. Ag officials in hard hit Monterey County say it's unclear when planting schedules will resume and all the flooded farms and delayed harvest could lead to higher costs for consumers nationwide. That's if supplies tighten and produce distributors turn to Mexico or other regions to make up for shortages and then pass on the added cost to consumers. Ag officials say it's too early to fully assess the damage, but are working to mitigate the long-term impact. There will be more crop losses as areas that have not experienced flooding now are now experiencing it for the first time. In Monterey County, the severe weather has forced farm workers out of their homes and left them without jobs. This community of Pajaro is mostly low-income Latino farm workers, and this is the worst thing that could have happened to them right now. For Consumer Watch, I'm Shelly Malashi. Coming up, it was principal for a day in Shasta County. Our Mike Mangus got to take a swing at it. Uh, the time right now, 6.37. I'm Dylan Brown. This is your North State News. For the day in Shasta County, Mike Mangus had the pleasure of spending some time at Reading School of the Arts. Executive Director Lane Carlson gave me a tour of the environmentally designed school off Shasta View Drive that opened at this location in 2011. You are my best friend. It is School of the Arts, so we caught part of a play rehearsal with the younger grades featuring a frog and a toad. The charter school is also known for its Mandarin immersion program, which is more than just a language class a day. Half of their day is spent in, in a Mandarin immersion, so they're learning their math and their science in, in Mandarin. Lane has been the executive director for a year and a half, but he already knew RSA from a parental standpoint. My children went through RSA, um, so K-5, through they did the Mandarin program here, so we were familiar with it, um, and so uh, it just seemed like a great opportunity to come, and just I had the high school experience that... Um, you know, I've worked a lot in the high school realm, and so that part was really exciting to me to, to be part of starting one. Well, one of the rewards here at RSA is to be able to slide down this slide from the top floor down to the bottom floor. It's only for special occasions, but when you're principal of the day, you can do what you want. It's one of the things that makes RSA unique. The school also expanded to a high school this year with freshman and sophomore classes. The new high schoolers are excited about it. The teachers and the environment is like really positive and I found that um, it's 
a great learning opportunity. The community is really great and because the school's still growing you get a chance to really get to know your teachers and your peers around you so it's, if you really want a great community where you have a lot of friends and you know each one and each teacher personally then this is an amazing school to come to. Mike would make a great principal, I think. That was Mike Mangus reporting. They'll grow to a junior class the next school year and seniors the following year. Lane says they're in the design phase of a high school campus that should open in the fall of 2024. Thanks to the faculty and students for their patience with Mike Mangus. He added that in the script. And he says a special thanks for allowing him the privilege of going down the slide. I like it. Well, here's a reason for the city of Reading to be happy for the sixth year in a row. The city's been approved to be a member of B City USA. B City USA is a nonprofit works with communities to help sustain and conserve bee populations, doing things like planting native plants, educating people on how they can help. If you'd like to learn more about the city of Reading's being a bee city, the Parks and Recreation Department will have all the info at a booth at next month's Earth Day Festival at Caldwell Park. And tomorrow's weather sweet as honey. Take a look at that 65 in Reading 64 and Chico sunshine all the way across the board, but it doesn't last too long and I'll tell you exactly when it fades in your first look forecast coming up. Also coming up high winds knocking glass off a skyscraper in San Francisco. The shocking scene all caught on camera. Those details when we come back. Stick around. Wind picked up glass fell from a San Francisco skyscraper after a window was reportedly broken by the weather. KGO's J.R. Stone reports. It's glass. Yes, glass falling as wind gusts intensified Tuesday in the financial district of San Francisco. This glass falling from 555 California, formerly the Bank of America Center. I did see someone crossing the crosswalk. It probably hit about 15 feet ahead of where they were going. So they got pretty lucky. Bernardino Ortiz shot this video of glass falling from the skyscraper from his nearby office just before 2 p.m. Tuesday. In the moments before that glass fell, he recorded some of the windows at 555 California actually shaking due to the windy conditions. A short time later, the other glass fell from above. Oh my God, it's cracking. More's falling. Yeah. Watch out, watch out. Back up. Back up. Firefighters say one window completely broke on the 43rd floor, another cracked. Those inside 555 California say it was windy. I think it was the windiest I've ever seen it. The building was like shaking a little bit. <laughs> I'm on 41 yeah. and it was windy. Wow. The windows were creaking. Maybe you'll hear the windows crack a little bit, like make a noise, but it was constant all day today. I guess the best way to describe it would probably be just, you know, an office outside of the airport. Um, you could definitely hear the wind rattling. Um, it sounded like a jet was taking off. Firefighters tell me it was so windy when they arrived here on scene, they had to tightly secure their helmets so they wouldn't blow off. No one was hurt, but emergency crews blocked off all nearby streets in case more glass fell. Investigators believe the winds were to blame but say it's unclear if a draft blew out the window or an actual item hit it. There, there's no way to tell if a, a rock hit the window or an article hit the window, though we have heard reports of people seeing things flying through San Francisco. Um, a lot of our um, windows on the outside was all, were also like getting hit with debris, random rocks. Um, it was rattling, so yeah, it was really scary. That was J.R. Stone reporting. San Francisco Fire says at least two windows were damaged. One completely broken and another just cracked. Back here to North State, though, the winds and rain died down so far. Uh, we saw blue skies and sunshine for most of our day, but we, we know this isn't going to last that long. Let's go to first little forecaster, Preston Dunn. Am I right on that, Preston? Yeah, Dylan, we can never have nice things for very long, at least in the early goings of spring or the late goings of winter. Certainly feeling more like winter, but not tomorrow. 65 in Redding and 64 there in Red Bluff. Look at about 60 even in Lakehead, 64 there in Cottonwood and in the city of Shasta Lake. As we slide further south, you'll see similar temperatures, maybe a little cooler. 64 for Orland and Willow, 63 there in Chico and Corning. 57, though, in Paradise, not not too bad. Let's take a look at where we're headed though. 
those clear conditions are going to persist throughout the night and into tomorrow. So if you got stargazing out there tonight, you can do that tomorrow. You can enjoy those blue skies yet again. We'll get some clouds in overnight, particularly out at the coast, but not a whole lot for the North State. Maybe a little bit there, a little bit of an arc over Siskiyou and Modoc counties. That's interesting. Now, as we slide into Friday afternoon, that's when things become partly cloudy, but we'll stay nice throughout most of the afternoon into the evening, though, becoming cloudier, and that's just a band of clouds. It's a teaser, a sample, if you will. Then as we slide into long range precision cast, that's when we start to see that rain looming off the coast and making its presence felt into Sunday in particular. Some disagreement on the timing of that. We could squeeze out some showers late Saturday night, but it looks like you'll be able to enjoy most of your Saturday without rain, save for the higher elevations. Now Sunday that rain looks to affect everybody. Some snow for the higher elevations. This is a fairly mild system, not a lot of precipitation and temperatures fairly mild, so snow levels will remain fairly high. We bring showers back in Sunday night into Monday, staying wet there, and then a more potent system slides in the middle of next week. This one colder for sure. You can see those lower snow snow levels showing up, certainly above the valley, but more precipitation happening and making for some difficult travel in the mountains. We're staying wet and rainy all the way into Thursday and even Friday. Another system sliding in there, so the active pattern remains. Now, these don't look like atmospheric rivers. It's going to be steady bouts of rain throughout the week as opposed to one giant punch like we saw yesterday. So that's what we're seeing in long range precision cast. Let's take you over to your temperature outlook. You can see we're expecting below normal conditions. Fairly high confidence there. That dark blue is 80% confidence in that six to 10 day range. So our extended is going to be chilly and that's a function of what we're seeing with that series of systems kind of dragging in from the Gulf of Alaska, bringing cooler air to the Golden State. So your rainfall outlook above normal as well. That troughing, that active weather pattern locking in further to our south, central coast where they've seen some of the worst of these rain systems going to be the brunt of that attack in the future, but we're still seeing above normal rainfall for our region, which is good as long as we can spread it out. And that is what the models are hinting at for this next series of systems, not as potent in an individual punch. So let's take a look at your seven day forecast. You can see that rain sneaking in, especially over the weekend. Spotty showers there becoming more steady Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Temperatures dropping down the way as we start spring off on Monday, but St. Patrick's Day looking pretty darn dry. Your nicest day being tomorrow, 64 there in Chico. Starting off a bit chilly though. And in Reading, similar setup. We're going to cool things off next week. You're going to want to stay indoors, but the next couple days you can get outdoors. For now though, let's take a look outside your weather window. Weather window presented by the National Weather Desk. Tuesday's nor'easter triggered a cool weather phenomenon on a New Hampshire lake. Thomas Prindle explains in his own video. Uh, yesterday's snow had so much water content and the wind was so strong that it was basically nature's way of rolling snow. So you've got all these rolled balls on the lake, which is pretty cool. For more content like this, follow the National Weather Desk on Twitter. Continued controversy in the Chico Unified School District. North State Congressman Doug LaMalfa introducing a bill he says will protect parental rights. More details in a bit. Stick around. And the Chico Unified School District over her daughter's gender identity has both state and federal lawmakers proposing new legislation. North State's News, Manasonic reports. Aurora Regino, the Chico Unified mother who is suing the school district for allegedly socially transitioning her fifth grade daughter in secret, speaking outside the district headquarters Wednesday. She was very young and didn't understand be, what being transgender really meant or the obstacles she would face going through a transition. Regino joined Republican Congressman Doug LaMalfa to push for a new bill. Proponents say the measure would strengthen parental rights in the classroom. Under the measure, schools that get funding under Title II would be prevented from using pronouns inconsistent with a child's biological sex without consent from a parent first. When Aurora contacted us, we knew we had to help take action and look at legislation that would at least tell the schools, look, you're not going to get away with just doing this, even though there's a liberal policy coming out of Sacramento that, that uh, pushes this. Right now, state law AB 1266 establishes protections for students based on gender identity and codifies the right to use relevant facilities. Separate guidance from the Department of Education prohibits schools from notifying parents of their gender transition unless directed to do so by the student. To, to pass a law mandating that schools out these kids before they're ready to tell their parents, that is despicable. These bills are, um, are, are attacks on uh, 
trans kids and LGBTQ kids in general and are going to uh, lead to violence against these kids. Meanwhile, in Sacramento, two Republican assemblymen are pushing another measure following the lawsuit against Chico Unified. The bill authored by James Gallagher and Bill Asali would require schools to inform parents if their child begins to identify as a different gender at school. You know, if they're using different pronouns or different names with the child at school, um, uh, if they're, you know, using different bathrooms, you know, dealing with anything with a child's development, you know, I think that the best policy and the right policy is to you and you engage parents. Reporting in Chico, Munasadic, the North States News. Coming up, we're taking some time to chime, checking out those viewer photos of last night's sunset. Stick around. Time to chime. Let's check out some viewer photos sent in by you at home. Let's start with this beautiful picture. Terry McCormick, she submitted before. This is wonderful. Captioned, calm after the storm. So as the storm cleared last night, it made way for a beautiful sunset. We also saw a rainbow live after the storm during the 630 show. Great view. So many of these sunset pictures were beautiful. Keep them coming. And thank you for sharing with us, Terry. And this next one sent in by Corey M. That just straight up looks like a painting. I, I feel like Bob Ross did this and submitted it. Uh, beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing this with us, Corey. And finally, last but not least, Jen, we can't forget about you. Jen Freeman sent us this masterpiece. She said she had to run through the mud and the puddles to snap it, risking her, her life right there. Definitely worth all the effort, though, Jen. That is stunning as well. We can make calendars, I feel like, out of these pictures. Seriously. Sometimes. Uh, let, before we go, let's look what's ahead for us uh, overall, Preston. Yeah, Dylan, so we talked about what your tomorrow looks like. It'll be pretty nice out there. Things becoming showery over the weekend. That steady rain as spring begins. So enjoy tonight's sunset with those clear skies. All right, sounds like a plan. Look at that beautiful shot. Join us for the 7 to 7. More news and weather. We appreciate you. on the 7 at 7. The skies might be cleared up, but parts of our north state still flooded. Roads you should avoid where you need to go if you need help. And in our cover story of the night, a new plan for cybersecurity, how lawmakers are holding tech companies accountable. Plus, evacuation orders in Glynn County lifted this morning. We're talking to experts about the proper precautions to prevent a disaster. All that and more starts right now. This is the 7 at 7 on KRCR, the North State's News. Well, hello. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to the 7 at 7. I'm Dylan Brown. A lot of creeks flooded in rural Shasta County, including Stillwater Creek in Bella Vista. That's where we start with our top seven stories of the night. Tuesday's rainstorm caused creeks across the North State to flood. Take a look at North Cow Creek in Palisadro. It rose so much, people kayaked down it. And just north of that, Stillwater Creek, typically very, well, still, was also ripping from the storm conditions. For one longtime resident, the creek's meteoric rise was a sight to behold. How would you describe what it was looking like yesterday? Crazy flood stages. Never worried about it coming up here on the property, but we never knew. We just don't know with the weather and the rain. It's called Dry Creek for a reason, and it's always very, very dry. Despite the wild conditions, Judy Myers is happy to see all this wet weather. She's a customer in the Bella Vista Water District, and they need all the water they can get. Wednesday brought a nice sunny break in the rain, but don't worry, another atmospheric river is arriving next week. Enjoy the sun while you can. For the North States News, I'm Sam Comenti. Well, the Anderson Cottonwood Irrigation District, or ACID, saw their canal flood yesterday from the heavy rainfall. Of course, the canal was completely dry just last year, so these conditions are a complete 180 for residents. A lot of ACID customers are, are frustrated. Flooding occurred with some blaming the district for putting them in the position by selling their limited water supply last summer, leaving the canal unprepared for such an influx of water. We spoke with the general manager for ACID on Wednesday who clarified what happened on their end. 
ACID's uh, irrigation season or the time in which we can divert water from the Sacramento River is April 1st through October 31st. We cannot introduce water into our system uh, via our contract or by any other means um, outside of that window. Um, so any and all of the water that folks saw uh, first in the canal and then overtopping the canal uh, was from upslope storm runoff. Shipley said as soon as the district noticed the canal's inability to handle the water coming in, local contractors were called in to help. He applauded the overall efforts by both city and county officials Tuesday, and in spite of the challenges, the GM knows the excess water will help ACID maintain their 100% allocation for this summer. And the river down the hallway. Great. 12 houses with 11 families were flooded Tuesday at an authority property management complex off of Main Street and Trefoil Lane in Cottonwood. Resident Tim Nielsen says almost everything was destroyed. Everybody's stuff is basically a total loss if it was within four feet from the ground. Residents here tell me within 20 minutes the water went from ankle deep to waist deep and some only had a few minutes to get out safely. Now right here basically turns into a dam for all the water because this drain got plugged up and every this whole thing just turned into one big pond. Nielsen says his family was not home at the time, but his sister, Miranda Teeter, arrived just before the floodwaters swept through their home and she had to carry her children out in the floodwaters. And I just strapped them on myself, both kids, and I started, I couldn't wait anymore. And then coming back Wednesday. Just seeing you know, all of our, your children's things just kind of ruined. It's just, it's just really devastating. Teeter says they're moving to another authority property and their friends also set up a GoFundMe to help as they don't have flood insurance. Teeter says the love from the community has simply been amazing. It's very humbling and really appreciated. And, you know, we have a great community. Reporting in Shasta County, Mason Carroll, The North States News. Well, flood evacuation warnings and orders have been lifted for Shasta County, but not before damage was done to some Anderson neighborhoods. People living off Hill Street just near 273 were placed under an evacuation order last night due to the flooding, but fortunately that's since lifted. Today, water still lines the road's edge along with debris and some downed tree branches. Residents say inside of their homes, it's been trashed, covered in mud. Nick Gregg and his family were sifting through what's left inside their home. He says it was a mess trying to get everyone out yesterday. And it's a mess today deciding what to say. Thankfully, the family says they have a place to stay while they sort everything out. It might have been sunny today, but it seems like everywhere in the North State is seeing the effects of the intense rainfall we saw this week, including those in Glen County. Earlier today, the lift for evacuation warnings took place, but only after the rain finally stopped. Glen County Emergency Services spoke to me about how these evacuation warnings don't happen too often, but when they do, they suggest you prepare ahead of time. So that way, when you do have to evacuate, you'll be ready to go. As we saw, the water comes up really quick and uh, your roadways can get cut off very easily. And so it's very important that you're prepared to stay in your home. So that is the safest place to be um, and to be able to weather that storm. Um, with food and water and the supplies you need for a couple of days until that water does recede. We do have evacuation zones um, and there is a map available so it's really good to know your zone so when we do send those alerts and it does have that zone number you're aware of what zone you're in. Public Information Officer Amy Travis adds that this is the most flooding the county has seen since 2017. The mix of the runoff from the mountains and heavy rainfall has certainly contributed to the flooding in Glen County. To know your zone and be aware of what areas are under evacuation warnings you can always look at our website krcrtv.com. Reporting in Glen County, Anna Montemore, the North States News. And we've talked a lot about flooding, so let's take a look at those watches and warnings. Certainly a clearer map than we saw yesterday, but still flood warnings in effect across the Sacramento River in portions of Tehama County, Butte and Glen County as well. And then as you head up into Modoc County there, the Pitt River near Canby also under that flood warning. Let's take a look at the forecast flood stages over the next 24 hours. According to hydrology from the National Weather Service, you can see most folks, Cow Creek, Tehama, Bri uh, Tehama Bridge still there under that minor flood stage, but a lot of places where we have seen some flooding starting to subside, the activity pushing further south. You see the Tehama Bridge, Vina Woodson, and Ord Ferry still in that orange, expecting minor flooding over the next 24 hours. So into tomorrow, we're still going to see that as that water processes through the landscape and moves south. Now you see further south than that into portions of Glen County, and in a little further than that, you start to see near flooding. So we're not expecting to see this flood as it continues further south, but right now we're still seeing those impacts of flooding over the next couple more hours.
All right, thank you, Preston. A reason for the city of Reading to be happy for the sixth year in a row. The city's been approved to be a member of B City USA. B City USA is a nonprofit. It works with communities to help sustain and conserve bee populations, doing things like planting native plants, educating the public on how you can help. If you'd like to learn more about the city of Reading's B City efforts, Parks and Rec Department will have more info with a booth set up at the next month's Earth Day Festival at Caldwell Park. We got a lot more coming at you tonight on the 77. One ticket to rule them all, or is it the master of tickets rules us all? We're talking ticks and what's trending. And you're looking live over right for a hazard loss sky cam. Looks like a Sunny D commercial, I'm going to be honest with you. Beautiful shot. We saw a break today. Only rainbows after rain. Dry weather, though, is headed our way. The full forecast coming up in just a few minutes. The time right now, 7.08. I'm Dylan Brown. This is your North State News. Over to KRCRTV.com. Let's check out in case you missed it tonight. Up first tonight, we're starting in Trinity County. Trinity County under a state of emergency. Earlier this month, Governor Gavin Newsom declared a state of emergency in several counties throughout California. This in response to the storms pounding our north state. However, Trinity County was left out. Many officials begging the governor to put them on that list. That changed yesterday. Newsom announced Trinity also under the state of emergency declaration along with Alpine and, Emerge and Orange Counties. In Shasta, Mercy Medical Centers in Reading and Mount Shasta and St. Elizabeth Community Hospital in Red Bluff all work together to donate at least two shipments of medical supplies to Cuba. Dr. Mercedes Petit has visited Cuba twice. She says the island has an abundance of skilled health care providers, but doesn't have the needed supplies. She went to Dignity Health North State and has been rewarded with two shipping containers full of equipment and supplies. Lots donated locally. Supplies were loaded in Reading last week. They're now in port in Florida, ready to be taken to a hospital in Havana. Dr. Mercedes is looking for help in paying the shipping costs. If you'd like to help, go to the Community Foundation of the North States Medical Supply Relief Fund. And of course, staying in Shasta County, Reading's Pathways to Hope announced its alumni of the year and celebrated her achievements at a ceremony yesterday. April Matthews named 2023's Pathways to Hope's North States AmeriCorps Projects Alumni of the Year. She started serving uh, as an AmeriCorps member with Pathways before eventually working her way up through the ranks and becoming deputy director. 2019, she moved on to a position at the Shasta County Office of Education as the program director of social and emotional learning, all while continuing to champion for Pathways to Hope. Executive Director Michael Burke told us Pathways to Hope would not be what it is today without April's dedication to their cause. You can read her story and more. Get all of these news anytime you want. It's easy to do with her KRCR News Channel 7 News app. Just search KRCR in your devices app store. The internet was buzzing today. Let's go online real quick. Find out what was trending. Uh, first, it's uh, like the villain you can't really escape. Ticketmaster. Folks online tried ordering tickets for Drake and 21 Savages tour. And of course, it was either impossible or just insane. The Cure. People were trying to order tickets there. Something curious kept happening. The fees were more expensive than the actual tickets itself. Two tickets for a Drake show at $272 each was for $544, but service fees added up to $527, a facility charge of $8, and order processing fee $6. Altogether, just more expensive than the ticket. Needless, a Drake ticket cost the budget of the Morbius movie, basically, quite a lot. So Gwyneth Paltrow getting some heat for her announcement of her latest eating routine. She's been dubbed an almond mom for her food habits, which dietitians have said it screams disordered eating. Basically, she says she has an early paleo diet dinner, fasts until midday, exercises for an hour, then lunches a bowl of bro bone broth. Dietitians, which there are many, say it's just too little of food. Also, she revealed she did rectal ozone therapy to help. Gastroenterologists offered advice saying do not get that. And finally, everyone's talking about the recent carpool karaoke starring the one and only Bad Bunny, the other half of Bindle. James Corden and Benito did a back and forth karaoke jam session. It basically broke the internet. Bunny admitted that Ariana Grande's song Break Free is one of the only English songs he really knows. So when it broke out, people broke off. People didn't know that Benito had that side of him, but he did, and he sang it pretty well. I love it. Big Bad Bunny fan right here, Preston. Big Bad Bunny. I love, that. love all his songs.
Good stuff. And it's good bunny weather out there tonight. Clear skies. That's a terrible transition. But no, that was good. Clear like skies that. on the way. We're looking at about 36 there, 34 in Shingletown, 36 in Redding. I'll tell you about everything beyond tonight in your first look forecast coming up soon. We'll hop on over to you with more. Thank you so much, Preston. Well, plus the White House putting forward a new plan for cybersecurity. What it is. You've got details in our cover story of the night. Don't make a move. We're coming back. recently about artificial intelligence or AI. Now Google is bringing that technology to some of its most popular products. In Gmail and Google Docs, you can type in a topic you'd like to write about and a draft will be generated. From there, you can ask for the tone to be more professional or more playful and make your own tweaks to it. These features will be rolled out to selected testers in the coming weeks. Google also unveiling though, an AI app builder to help businesses or governments build their own AI powered chats and digital assistants. Tech Giant says companies could customize their own AI applications in a matter of minutes or hours. Testing on that started earlier today. Some experts, though, are saying the biggest threat facing American infrastructure and U.S. companies could be a cyber attack. National Desk Angela Brown reports in our cover story of the night. The 2021 Colonial Pipeline ransomware attack causing panic at the pump, driving up gas prices. Nearly two years later, experts still warning America is not ready. Today, America's already behind the eight ball when it comes to securing our critical infrastructure. Days ago, the White House announcing its national cybersecurity strategy. One major component, what the White House calls the rebalance of responsibility. That includes shifting the burden for cybersecurity away from individuals, small businesses, and local governments to software companies and others. Right, if a hack occurs, we don't blame the software companies. It sounds like there's a potential shift there, and which could lead to a new litigation. It could lead to a different balance in responsibilities, and it could lead the tech companies to be a lot slower in innovating products because they've got to test it a lot longer. The plan calls for using all instruments of national power to disrupt and dismantle threat actors, creating a global supply chain for information and communication technology, as well as addressing the ransomware threat through a comprehensive federal approach. But the White House is only part of the equation. So one of the important things that we need to do to implement this plan is Congress needs to create a national comprehensive approach for cybersecurity, privacy, and data security, and plug those holes that exist today when it comes to things like nonprofits who are often left as a kind of a blind spot in our safety and security apparatus. And that's one of the best ways that Congress can step forward. Overall, the plan is not getting much pushback, but two Republicans are expressing opposition. Representative Mark Green and Andrew Garbarino releasing a statement saying, quote, it's no surprise that this administration's desire for regulation, bureaucracy, and red tape is a consistent theme in the national cybersecurity strategy. The White House strategy could have lasting impact shaping corporate behavior. In Washington, D.C., I'm Angela Brown. All right, although we're expecting low temps tonight, we saw lots of sun today. We're wrapping up the stormy conditions for now. Let's head to the Weather Center. First weather forecaster Preston Dunyan. Preston, what are you seeing? Yeah, Dylan, we're going to enjoy this while we have it. Not for too terribly long, but it's certainly there tomorrow. Thursday looking sunny across the board. 56 there in Weaverville. Take one degree off in Lewiston and another degree for Trinity Center there. 54 Mount Shasta City. One of the cool spots at about 48. East winds about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Not a big deal. A little bit breezier here, but not by a lot. 47 there in Fall River Mills, 50 in Bernie and warming all the way up to 56 in Shingletown. As we slide into the valley, we'll get a little warmer than we did today, looking at about 65 in Redding and Anderson, 64 in Cottonwood and Red Bluff. So it'll be a nice day to get out and enjoy those winds also subsiding a bit, still out of the north, but closer to maybe 5 to 10 miles per hour, as opposed to what we saw maybe 20 miles per hour today. 63 for Corning, Chico and Gridley, 64 for Willows, Orland and Oroville, and 57 up in Paradise, nearly 60 up on the ridge. You got to take that when we can get it after what has been a very long extended winter now. We've got a bit of a ridge. That's what we're seeing here. That's given us those clear skies and those mild temperatures, but it's not much of a ridge, right? If we see those big orange and red colors popping up, that's when we get warm. We're not doing that. We're just staying dry for a moment. And that lasts throughout your Thursday and into Friday for the most part. But as we slide into the weekend, that's when we start to see that ridge crumble a little bit. And then we bring in some showers Monday and later into next week. That's when that low really drags through. And again, you saw the track of this 
boom, sweeping through from the Gulf of Alaska. That's how we get that cold air back in place. And so we're going to see chilly temperatures even as we start off what the astronomers call spring. I say spring starts on March 1st, but neither of us are right because it still feels like winter out there next week. That trough moves its way through. We dry things out maybe briefly before more rain into the late goings of next week. It's going to be active and that activity starts here according to the European model close to 830 Sunday morning, especially in the higher elevations, but maybe the South Valley seeing those spotty showers. Looks like we'll avoid rain in your Saturday, so that's your good news, but rain picking up overnight into Monday and then staying rainy throughout the week. You see this continue to pile up and I want to point out something. We see 3.25 inches of rain there in Reading. That's pretty dramatic, right? We saw 2.94 inches of rain at Reading yesterday alone. So while these numbers are fairly high, you're seeing nearly two inches in a lot of spots. We're not seeing that all at once. This is spread out over the next 10 days or so. So that's the good news. We're going to get more rain. We always need it, but we need it to be spread out. And that's what we're seeing here on the European model. American model, fairly good agreement. Maybe bringing that rain in a little earlier into your overnight hours in the Sunday, but Still pretty similar in terms of what we'll see over the weekend into early Monday. By the time we get through the rest of next week, maybe lesser totals to the north end of the valley, certainly more further south. But again, it's the spread out timeline that makes this more beneficial rain than dangerous. Let's take a look at your rain outlook. It's above normal out there and your temperatures below normal. You'll see that slide showing up in your seven day forecast here. We're bringing things back into the 50s next week, but rain really becoming steady on Monday when spring arrives. And that's the case in Reading as well. St. Patrick's state nice and dry weekend little showery heavier rain into the early goings of next week so spring starts off pretty winter like all right thank you so much preston and speaking of magical let's go to entertainment news tonight uh warner brothers is expanding one of the most successful franchises in literary and cinematic history and it's going to tokyo harry potter Wingardium Leviosa, right? The company showing a preview of a new Harry Potter studio tour in the Japanese capital this morning. The Tokyo studio modeled after the one in London, but will be larger and is expected to open in June. Well, Glendale, Arizona, ceremonially renaming itself Swift City. Hey, oh, celebrating the start of Taylor Swift's tour. She's kicking off her The Eras tour with shows in Glendale State Farm Stadium Friday. After that, she's headed to 19 other cities. Other naming options included Swift Dale, Taylor Dale, the city of Taylor Swift, Taylor Nation, but Swift City ended up winning out. Taylor Town was the runner up. The name Swift City is only for the weekend. We got a lot. Seven up next, a little pup swam too far into the ocean, causing lifeguards to spring into action. Incredible rescue, that's next. Coming up tonight at 10 and 11, looking all around the North State, the damage done after those fast floods swept through homes, trapping some. What we could witness whipping up next week. Could it bring more? That and more tonight at 10 on Fox at 11, back here on KRCR News Channel 7. Let's get to feeling good. It's hump day. I want to get to that moment of the day. Sometimes little dogs think that they're really big dogs. Such was the case with a little pup in California. Uh, that white puffball is Tofu on the surfboard there. Tofu was running loose in a parking lot Saturday at Junipero Beach when the dog ran into the waves. Long Beach lifeguards say Tofu swam about 150 yards offshore, prompting lifeguards to go in for the rescue. Tofu was loaded up onto a paddleboard, brought to safety. While cold and shaken up after such a long swim, this little pup's doing just fine and is back with his owner. Like that. He, was trying to hit, he was trying to hit the waves, right? Preston. Yeah, you know hang saying? loose a little bit. He hang would be loose. a good Olympic swimmer, I think. He's doing, <laughs> yeah. he could do laps 150 yards. <laughs> well, tomorrow you could go swimming in your pool, maybe as long as it's heated. 65 hey in Reading, 64 in Chico. Sunny conditions out there, not too breezy, so a great day for everybody in the valley and the higher elevations as well under those blue skies. I already put my youth adult pool away this season, Preston. <laughs> All right, thank you. Join us tonight at 10 on Fox 11 ABC. We appreciate it.